her love teammates and welcome to another episode of Hadrico Live. I'm your host, Hadrico, and today we are sitting down with William Boston, the CEO of William Boston Apparel. This young man started down in Miami, Florida and built his own clothing company from the ground up. We're going to sit down and talk with him about some of the struggles that he went through, how he took no and turned him into yes, and how he is one of the most up and coming new clothing brands out in the streets. So if you need something to wear or if you want to hear something to talk about, tune in because Hadrico Live is coming at you right now. All right, teammates, welcome to another episode of Hadrico Live. It's your host, the man 50 grand, Hadrico himself. And today we are taking y'all to a CEO's office. We are taking you to sit down with Mr. William Boston, owner, operator, C. I mean, basically, who oh, you running it. <laughs> the William Boston Apparel Company. Will, how you doing this afternoon, sir? Man, I'm in here. I'm alive, so I'm well. I'm, I'm uh, today is supposed to be an admin day, and I was supposed to work on the business, but um, God saw different, so now I'm working. So <laughs> it's all good. But I'm overall, I'm good. They say it costs to be the boss, and I think that's an understatement. So the days you thought you were supposed to be off, you turn around working. But at the end of the day, that's always a good thing. Because if you're working, that means somebody out here copping what you're putting together. You're right. Absolutely. So now, most people, when they think of clothing <laughs> companies, the only ones they think of is FUBU. I mean, you know, we used to have Rock and FUBU, and, and mm-hmm. we, this ain't something that's brand new to you. You've been on this clothing line thing. What? made you get into this how basically how was william boston born just like you just said like you started off with fubu right so high school you know fubu carl kanai Mm -hmm. when sean john came out so i just saw already just you know we from miami so we like to dress we like to get fresh you know but just seeing that it's some people who look just like me making clothes making apparel I was like, man, I, I want to do that eventually. I didn't know how. I didn't know how then at the time. And um, it's just, a, it was a, it was an idea of mine to do and got a chance to like fully take advantage of it when I went to college. Most people, when you tell them, I want to design clothes, most people look at you like, man, if you don't sit your head down somewhere, go find a job. That ain't no job. You ain't going to make no money doing that. I can imagine how much adversity or how many doubters, you know, we people call them haters of, but it's how many people try to discourage you from going down this path. Take me through that. How did, how did that, how did that go? And how did you keep focus? Well, you know what, you know, you always want the support of your family. Um, and so my mom, <clears throat> cause my dad passed away when I was six. So all I know is my mom, that's who I got. That's my rock, my foundation. Right. So, With my mom, she just knew that I was creative. I wasn't being getting in trouble. This is keeping me out of the way at this time. At at that time, we're talking. So I want to give people time frames. We're talking 2002, you know, 2003. At this time, I'm I'm in Jacksonville. I'm not in Miami no more. I'm in Jacksonville. I'm in college. But on the breaks, I'm going to Miami because, you know, I'm I'm away from home. I'm homesick. This is all new to me. I got to get back home for a little minute. I need to, I need to be at the crib. So on those times when I was home, I was still, I was painting t-shirts at the house and she would be like, Oh, you in there? Oh, you, I, I used to have to use her blow dryers to dry the shirts and all this other stuff, but she made it was like, she saw that I was doing something productive. I had people intrigued by it. So she tapped in, she would get me new blow dryers to do the stuff. Hey, I was out and I saw this paint. Um, I'm gonna buy this for you. So she just, she didn't, I don't think she saw it, the vision like that, but she just knew I was doing something productive and I was, I was gaining a little following with it. So just knowing I had that was support. But when I decided to really go like into a business, when I changed my major from criminal justice to business management, mm-hmm. and then I left school for a year to go and get to work so I can save up money to put into the business. <laughs> That's when everybody was like, oh, no, nah, what you mean you're leaving school? People who leave school don't go back. Don't the go percentage back. rate of people going back to school is low. I mean, it's high and you're not going to graduate this time and third. So I heard that from my mom. I heard that from my grandmother. It's almost like in a sense where they felt like I was letting them down. Where I was like, yo, I just need y'all to trust and believe. Just, just trust me. I'm taking this year off just to invest. I need to go work because I can't make no money out here at this, on, on campus. 
you know, it's you you got all these classes. It's too much time taken up. It's hard to find a decent job where you're making some decent money. So I took a year off, man, and I ended up working three jobs at one time. I was working at Pizza Hut, delivering pizza in the daytime. I was working at Walmart overnight doing stock, and I was working Target overnight as well doing stock. And I got so good at, with, with the folks at Target that they knew that I had a job at Walmart. So the days that I was off at Walmart, they made sure I was on at Target. So I, I was right. never off for like, oh, for a year straight, bro. For a year straight, I bought none of these things that I, I, I'm a big shoe fanatic. So I just stopped buying shoes. No shoe. The shoes that I had that year, which was around 2005, 2006, those are shoes I wore for that year. Because <laughs> all I did was go to work. I just went to work. I came to the crib, paid my bills, and went and repeat, washed and repeat every day. And then while I was doing that, though, I was still making shirts. I was still on the side, like, still getting my money up for making shirts, still trying to get the brand out there, investing into business cards and flyers. And I was doing all the stuff that people don't do now, uh, like hitting the streets and getting out, putting your name out there. So that that's how I just kept going with it. But the adversity part was they, people, my family didn't believe, but I knew, you know, I just saw the vision. I mean, you held on to faith. You held on to the faith that you had, that you knew that what you wanted to do in this company was going to be bigger than what everybody else could see. So going through that year, you hustling, you grinding, how easy would it have been for you to just say, I'm done, man. This is just not going to work. I'm just going to go down a different path. Let me go get a job doing something else. Uh, it could have been real easy because like you, like I'm saying, it, it, it wasn't nobody there to say like, um, when you come in from a family of people who never owned a business and they just know get a degree and get a good job, you're speaking a foreign language. Mm -hmm. When you say I'm about to start a business and on top of that, you telling me that the business that you about to start is a uh, you about to make clothes. How are you going to do that? <laughs> you got to find a piece. You got to do this. You got to travel. You know, people go all the way to China to get stuff. You got money to go. They give you all the things that they're scared of, you know, and try to put, put that fear in you. But I'm a person with like once I'm once I'm headstrong on something, bro, and I see if I can see light at the end of the tunnel. My light at the end of the tunnel was me seeing this progress in college. I'm a I'm a I'm a guy from Miami, Florida, who's never been to Jacksonville before. Get to Jacksonville, start making T-shirts while I'm in college. I have the whole college wearing these shirts every day. You can't go out your dorm without seeing somebody and something I made. Mm. It became a trickle effect, you know. So I was like, okay, yeah, it's motivational. So. I knew that I had this small little world, which is the college world, my, my school on lock, Edward Waters. But Jacksonville was so much bigger. I didn't, people in the city didn't know. And I was like, I gotta get out here so I can expand the brand more. And then while I'm going home, let me let me link up with my partners at the crib and put them onto what I'm doing and just continuously going. Cause I, I already saw just a little light and that little light just said, keep going. And that's what I did. I just kept going. I mean, that type of hard work and dedication has definitely paid off because right now you have a full blown apparel company. But even then, everybody thinks, oh, there's only that struggle in the beginning. And now you reap the benefits. Let's talk about you. Let's let's fast forward a little bit. You have the business. You're in it. You've committed. And now you go into some of these major companies to get your your clothing line basically print, ran and said, hey, I want you to put my stuff in your store. I want you guys to take me seriously. How was that first? No. How did you handle that when you had all your aspirations and hopes and dreams and saying, look at what I got and somebody wasn't feeling it. Shoot. That just made me say, okay, let me see what y'all got in here. That's so that, that looks better than mine. Or, or why do you have it in here that you can't carry mine? And I had a guy tell me too, you know, he was like, I just think you need to like step up the design parts or whatever. And I, I took that constructive criticism. And I was like, all right, cool. Bet. That's what I'm going to do. So when I came back with the stuff and, and shout out to, to that guy, his name is Tony. Him and his partner, D. The first people to put my stuff in their stores, it was called 904 Fashions. Put it in there on consignment. Consignment is when you give them the stuff and you get a percentage. You 
maybe like 60, 40, you get 60, they get 40, or you could do 80, 20, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. So worked out a deal with them to get it in there. But once it got on consignment and it started selling, I was able to turn that into like, now we, now let's place an order because it's selling now. People are coming in and not even knowing that it's, that is me or my clothes or whatever. They just like it because it looked dope. It's selling now. But my first no just made me say, I'm going to make you say yes. It wasn't like, oh, dang, man, I, they ain't trying to wear it, put it in here, let me stop or whatever. That just said, if I, the no is always going to lead to a yes. You got to keep going. It's a numbers game. When you, when you, um, before I got into like doing those three jobs or whatever, just in college, you're trying to find little avenues and make money. So I did the little call center things and all that other stuff. One thing that always stuck in my head from them was the numbers. Like, you got to keep calling, calling. You're going to get somebody. It's a numbers game. Now, everybody's going to say yes to what you're selling over the phone, but it's a numbers game. So I just took that same aspect and applied it to my business, and especially going out to different stores and stuff like, yeah, you said no, maybe he said no, whatever, but I got somebody who said yes. Boom, let's go. So I'm just working on the yeses. You know, the, the no's is just more motivation. motivation. Let me go in here and switch it up because I may, I may come back and this store may like the, the new stuff now, the p- person who said no. So I just use that as motive. That's, that was all fuel for me. That was it. So now you got to the point to what, what I'm seeing is you use basically everything that was thrown against you. you instead of most people who kind of take some of that adversity and they use it as a reason to shut down. You use it as, okay, this is going to be what fuels my fire to keep me going. So you start getting a little success. You start, you start to make a little money now. You know what I'm saying? You Calvin, you don't graduated from the fries now. You know what I'm saying? You don't moved up. All right. How do you handle that success? Because, and the reason why I say this is we grew up in the same city. You already know you get some money, you go buy some rims, you go buy some shoes. You, I mean, you, you trying to be fresh. Financial security and financial responsibility is not really, I don't remember that class at the Homestead scene. Y'all know you pretty sure, I'm sure you don't either. Mm-mm. How do you handle that success and help keep yourself moving forward? Well, one thing I knew that I was up here by myself, wasn't no family. And my main motivation was to never have to move back in with my mom. Shout out to my mom. I love you, mama, but I can't stay with you. I <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, my motivation is to not stay. With, so when the money start coming in and I was when I was able to make money off the brand and live at the same, like make money from the brand, pour back into the company and also pay my personal bills and then live, have money to do things I want to do. That's when I knew I started making some real money. And that didn't come to like around bro, probably like 2008 or nine. Mm. Maybe, maybe like, may, no, nah, I'm probably like 2010 to be honest. Eight years in. So I started in two, yeah, 2002. Yeah, bro, about 2010, dog. I didn't make, I, didn't, I was making money, but you know, it wasn't enough to live off of. It wasn't until about 2009, 2010, where I started making real legitimate money, where I started, like, my, my goal was to save $50,000. And I was able to do that. So once I did that, I said, okay, I know I can get the six figures. I done got 50. So that was just motivation in, in itself for me to just keep going and also, you know, keep the money that I have, but not blow it on stupid things. I already, this is the thing, I already canceled out clothes because I make the clothes. So I don't got to go buy no clothes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wear my own clothes. <laughs> yeah. 24-7, 365, I wear my own stuff all the time. I'm a walking billboard, so I'm always going to have on something in mind, Right. Only thing else I like to buy was shoes. So I would just have get my shoes in there, but I slowed down on buying the shoes because I was a person buying shoes every week, you know, but slowed down on that. And then just knew that I had to funnel money back into the business. So you, I, I kind of learned on the fly on how to budget my money. Now mm-hmm. I had hiccups because I was young. So if you see, if you, if you have a $20,000 month you and you, 26, 25, you're going to blow some of that money, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you, you had some good times. Money. Yeah. I didn't, man, travel, doing all type of stuff, taking all type of trips and buying cars and all this stuff. I had three cars at one time for no reason, just doing stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> so and I don't do that stuff now. I got one vehicle. <laughs> yeah. 
it's just back then I'm getting that money like that, man. I was buying all type of stuff, but also knowing I had to put it back into the business. So I never, I never blew it, but I did have those times. I did have those moments where now let me I just went a little hell. Let me interject here because typically when you're making money like that, all of a sudden, boy, you got more friends than you can deal with. You got more cousins, more relatives, more everybody comes. I'm be talking about. What, 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 William, hey, you remember back? Everybody want to remember back when? How did you? Well, you know, your circle, my circle always been like tight, like small with the people that I knew that I grew up with, that I was cool with. You know, um, yeah, I would say like <laughs> a lot of people that we went to school with would just hit me like on some, hey, I want to, it was just weird. Like you want to get advice now or you want to, um, I've had people ask me to help pay their rent and all type of stuff. Oh, and wow. it's people we went to school with too. Oh yeah, man. Like, because I think they see that you're a given person, but I only give when I feel like it, it gotta be, it gotta be a, a feeling like, you know what I'm saying? I can't describe the feeling, but it's just a thing you feel like, okay, I feel this in my spirit to give, but yeah, I had people like that. It was more so, it was more so the people that I grew up with and some people from high school just came out the woodwork trying to be like, you know, hey, in your circle. Going on? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know that happens, man. You know that happens and people kind of come out of nowhere, but you've shown that you kind of had that that mental toughness to not fall into that. I like that you pointed out that, yeah, I made money, but I still made mistakes because sometimes people want to give you advice and they pretend like they ain't never made mistakes. I think it's important for people to oh, know no. mistakes did, made by everybody. Yeah. yeah, I made mistakes. I I cashed out on a bunch of stuff. I wrecked my credit a couple of times and got it back up. And yeah, man, I done been, had the ups and downs, but that's just the part of the of life. That's a part of the game. That's just a part of everything. It's everything we do from the business to life, man. It's just... It's similar to that when you in the hospital and you got that thing going up and down, beep, 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 beep. It, oh, it's God. always up and down. It's always like that. The minute it's like this, it's not good, brother. Oh, no. Flat <laughs> line, everything, flat line yeah, is not good. It's not good. When you just cope, if you coasting through life, if you coasting through your bit, if you, if it's like this, it's not good, bro. It has to be some ups and downs. It got to be like that. That's just, is it is what it is. But it's just learning how to, take those downs and take take the good with the bad. So if you had to give a piece of advice to a young designer who's trying to get into this business, because I know you mentioned one thing earlier, you said back in the days you had to hit the streets. Nowadays with social media and everything, it's almost a whole different marketing strategy. What advice would you give that young designer trying to become the next William Boston or the next clothing brand or the next great? Still keep, still get you some business cards. <laughs> I still keep business cards. I still keep flyers. I still hand to hand to people and talk to them while I'm out and about. If I see somebody who look like they into clothes and they fresh, I, I check out their sneakers and I see they got some dope sneakers or maybe they got unique clothes or whatever. I just hand them something, you know what I mean? That And it's real quick. I just know, I know for a fact, you got 10 seconds to capture somebody's attention. Man, you got right. those 10 seconds to capture somebody's attention and that's what I do. But to advice wise, right now for the younger generation, bro, they have it so much easier than what I had coming up. We didn't have, we be, we had MySpace, you had Facebook, which you had to be in college to have Facebook. You had to have EDU behind your uh, email to have a Facebook. There was no Instagram, there was no Twitter, there was no Snapchat, there was none, all this stuff. Hey, stop so dating. Stop, my dating. Advice, stop dating us, bro. Stop making us sound like we old, bro. Come on now. Hey, I know I'm, but I'm happy to be old, bro. Getting old. <laughs> we see. I'm embracing bro. mine, bro. Seasoned. That's seasoned. everything is better when it's seasoned. Yeah, I'm. Em there you go. I'm embracing mine. My my advice would be to the younger generation trying to get into the game, is take advantage of technology, everything that's that that you have out, but also. Get out here and be, you know, vocal about your brand. You got to actually get out here and talk to people and be hands on with your stuff. You can't sit behind that phone and the screen all day and think that these millions going to come to you and stuff like that. Also, be creative with your designs. Like, don't be stuck on one design for so long. You got to stay creative. You got to move with the times. You got to know when when you're in winter, you don't need to be still promoting all your winter stuff. You need to start promoting spring. 
when you're in the spring, you need to be promoting your fall. You need uh summer. You need to keep ahead of the times. You got to stay one season ahead, you know, to stay, to be afloat. Because if not, the game changed so quick. New styles come in every month, it seemed like, or almost every day, it seemed like it's something new. And then also don't jump on every trend. Find your lane, what you're trying to do, and stay in that lane. And then you'll be successful, but you got to be vocal about your brand. You got to be out and out and about with it. All right. And so wear your stuff every day. Well, there you go. Make sure you put your own stuff out there. What, what's next for William Balson? Where is the brand going? What's next is now due to the pandemic, a lot of the stores that we had, you know, not selling, the, you know, a lot of stuff went out of people went out of business, out of your control. That's a part of life. You know what I mean? But what's next is to now I don't want to depend on the stores to sell it anymore. I actually want to just start putting my my building my own stores in different markets. That's next. That's what I that's my next within the next five years, you will see a chain of William Boston stores in different locations, as well as making it the, my online presence even bigger than what it is now. And my online store is my 24-7, 365 store. It never closes. You know what I mean? So I could put a lot into that and uh, make that grow even more. But what's next is to build out these stores throughout the U.S. and to get a factory in China. That's that's the plan. So you're trying to take this thing global. Yeah, that was, I didn't get in this to just be local. Hey, that's what I'm talking. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about. Take it over. And look, um, when you let me know when you're ready for uh. A grown man model. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get my modeling career on. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be. You know what, though? Boom. On the on the real, I really want to get into that too. I'm glad you said that. I want to get into more contemporary pieces. I want to get into suits. I want to get into those structures. Um, and that's coming. That's coming. Well, listen. Yeah, that is coming. Hey, you ain't said nothing slick to a can of oil. Let me know, man. Listen, I, I'm, instead of look, instead of, instead of me having his Under Armour logo, man, I ain't mad. Let, let me have William Boston logo in here. I'm, I'm trying to support all my businesses. No, I feel you. I'm out here doing good stuff. Um, I think it's amazing what you're doing. I think it's great that you can see a person that comes from such a meager background. And when I say meager background, you had to be there to understand it. You had to understand how yeah. we grew up in the situations in the area that we lived in to see where you are now. You know, sometimes I sit back and I say, well, damn, you know what? I don't done pretty damn good for myself. I was just going to piggyback off of that. I don't think people understand, especially for me, especially me, like um, they'll just look at your demeanor and uh, your physical and think like, uh, you know, he's doing well for himself. He's doing this. He has a business. Him and his fiance have a business. They doing all this other stuff. Not knowing that coming out of Miami is rough. <sighs> I didn't. I, my mom, when I, bro, my mom was on drugs when she was, when I was born, you know what I mean? Like coming into the, not when I was born, but after I was born, she got on drugs. She fighting that hurricane Andrew coming in and wiping us out. You know what I'm saying? I had several incidents where I could have died in Miami due to just being in the wrong place at the this? wrong time. Wow. I've been, I done been robbed. I done been shot at all this crazy stuff in Miami. So, you know, I'm saying, you know, but the other people who don't know of all the things that me or you have experienced um, don't get to see that and just see like, you know, the rising and not seeing all the other stuff. For anybody that's going through any adversity, just know as long as you think positive, then it will be positive. And that's what I thought. I was like, yo, I got to make some I got to make a transition. I got to make something happen. I got to do something with my life because. I can't be like these other folks. I can't be going to jail. I don't went to jail for the dumbest things. You know, I'm just being around the wrong people, bro. That's all it takes. Not even I had a moment in my life at 18 where I went to jail that I was 17 going on 18 because it was senior year in high school. I went to jail for assault with a deadly weapon charge, but I didn't even commit the crime. I just happened to be with a group of people who did commit the crime. <laughs> right. While in that cell, I'm fighting to get out of there because I don't even know why I'm why I'm in here. I ain't do nothing. You know what I mean? But I'm guilty by association. association. They're saying that they saying that I can face 15 years for this charge that I didn't do. To, I had nothing to do with. <laughs> that right <laughs> there was like I was like, you know what? That's this is it. <laughs> I ain't, I don't got to hang with these people or be around. 
I'm about to do some some with my life, and it's gonna be for the positive. I mean, you say that, man, and it, it sparks up so many memories, so many different situations. And then you think about all the foolish stuff that we probably did that you didn't that you didn't even get caught for. All the things that you probably went on in yeah. that part that you never even got caught Bro, for. <laughs> listen, that's the thing. All the stuff that I did prior to that, I ain't get caught for that stuff. <laughs> The one time that I didn't do anything is the one time I went to jail. But I think that was God like, yo, hey, if you don't chill out, this is where you're going to be. Nice. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think y'all, I don't even think you knew, y'all knew coming in the senior year, I was on house arrest. I had a house arrest monitor on my head. Nope, ankle. sure didn't. I couldn't I, do nothing. I couldn't do nothing but go to school and come home, bro, for three months. Mm. No basketball. Couldn't play basketball. That's why I didn't play my 12th grade year. I was on house arrest. <laughs> I had no clue. And I saw you damn near saw you every day running around with a camera talking about some beef. Every day. I had no clue. <laughs> yeah. Listen, man, this brings me to the point of this show where I call it the final time. I, for the final time, I listen up, listeners, viewers, however you get in this, your situation does not determine who you are. You can make whatever you want to make out of what you are. You want to have a company? Go get it. You want to be a star? Go make mm -hmm. it. You want to be whatever you desire. You can do that. You just got to have the determination. You got to have the focus and you got to have the mindset to go do it. You can be that person that you want to be. Stop dreaming and wishing you can be somebody else when you already got a dope body and a dope person in yourself. We have to realize that self-love is so important. I want to take the time to thank out my Patreon supporters, the people who are supporting the pod. Ernest Aziz, James Brown, Mike D from Brickhouse Barbecue. I appreciate the love. And we want to thank our guest, Mr. Boston, William Boston, the pair. And I know y'all saying, how can I get me some of these flat clothes, the shoes, everything that I got going on? Don't worry, y'all. He about to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> One, all you got to do is log on to the site. It's WilliamBostonApparel.com. That mm -hmm. apparel is A-P-P-A-R-E-L. Or you can do the short way. And just www.wlmbstn.com. And just to piggyback off you off of what you said about not letting you know adversity stop you and this down the third. My, the name of the company is William Boston, only because when I was in school, everybody used to get the shirts. And instead of just calling me Will or whatever, they always had to say my whole name. Oh, I got it from William Boston. I got it from William Boston. So that's what I called the brand, William Boston. But in the, in the midst of it, I wanted to have it to make a, a meaning because I've been through a lot and, you know, I've, I've surpassed a lot. So the meaning of the brand is that it's when life misleads, be strong through negativity. Mm. That's what that means. That's what the WLBSTN means. It's just I shorten it to make it seem like it says William Boston because I took the vowels out of my name and made it fit together. But abbreviated, that's what it means. When life misleads, you got to be strong through that negative. You got to, because <laughs> everything ain't going to go your way how you want it to go. So you got to be strong through it. But back to the selling point, <laughs> we got the shoes on deck. Okay. You can cop these online, WilliamBostonApparel.com. Of course, we got the runners on deck. These okay, just, the, know, Mai Tai. Right the Mai Tai runners. Yeah, these are the Mai Tai. It's the my time runners. Oh, you see, you, you know, I knew that. Look, see, I, be, I did my homework, yeah. baby. These are the hibiscus runners available online. And then we also got the Black Knights. And, you know, a top seller right here. You can't keep these in stock. <laughs> available okay. online. So all of these things are available on WilliamBostonApparel.com. Man, we got everything from the hats to the sock. Everything from head to toe. I could dress you from head to toe. From the hats to the shirts to the hoodies to the joggers, the socks, the shoes, we got everything. Hey, real talk, I do want to thank you for taking the time, man. I know you're a busy dude, man. So taking the time to come out and sit down and talk with us regular folk, you know what I'm saying? We ain't all, you know, we ain't sit here. Man, yeah. hey, but give me time. Hey, listen, yeah. we can't, y'all, y'all protecting us. So I appreciate the service, my brother. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> Success. Yeah, a lot of people claim they really want it, <laughs> but not too many people gonna put the work in like they need to. So you gotta be willing to lace them shoes up, put 10 toes down the pavement, and hit the ground running. Yeah, but just know along the way, you are gonna be faced with all type of obstacles. But nah, nah, we don't let those stop us. We just find other ways to keep it moving. 
So you got to keep the pace going. It's forward progress only. You got to go until you can't go no more. Even when times get rough and it look like things out of sight. See, that's when you keep going. That's when you go your hardest. Your drive and determination is what's going to get you to the end. Because you got to remember one thing and one thing only. The goal is to succeed. Believe that. Thank <laughs> you.